So we got a par four here. We got two options. We got a left flex shot. I'd probably throw the Raider. And we got the right low option, which I'd probably go with the Rive. More overstable. It's gonna really give me that finish away from the water. So let's start off with the flex option with the Raider here. So I just flexed around that tree, pretty much exactly what I was going for. Flex back into the fairway. Now let's go ahead and throw a low, low screamer. Throw along the, along the path, along the water, and kind of fade back left. There's my two drivers. <laughs> so for a shot that I want to be a little more conservative, I'm going to go with a sidearm. So I'm just going to throw a nice, consistent, smooth sidearm with my Royal Rive right through the gap. So just nice consistent finish at the end, and I'm gonna be in a good spot a big percentage of the time. All right, so now we're stepping up to a bomber par three, as you can see with water left. And so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my flippy side of my distance drivers and grab my Royal Rive. I'm really just trying to throw them out on Annie and just have them hold glide over top of the trees and then fade back maybe at 450 or 500 feet down the fairway. And I just gotta trust it over the water because I know it's gonna flip. There we go, that's better. So it's gonna go out, turn, and then glide back at the end. Oh, nice. So I can skip back, and I should have a putt on this super tough par three. So Rick, would you ever consider going sidearm over the water, or is it too far, or what's the, what's the decision process like? Yeah, I mean, when you're throwing a sidearm over the water like this, I wouldn't, unless I'm just laying up for a safe shot, but to be aggressive, the main play would be a backhand, because if even if I, saw it off maybe, I can still get some glide and get up there for a potential par save versus a sidearm. If I, if I mess up a sidearm, I'm right, at, right in the water and I'm still re-throwing and I can get a huge number, six or seven. So the backhand just eliminates the big number but gives you a chance to still score a birdie. So we got a par four and we got OB on the right hand side and the, the play is to throw an overstable disc over top of the OB and just be able to rely on the stable, overstable finish at the end. So that's why I'm going with the Enforcer, my Lucid, Lucid X Signature Series Enforcer. Throw it out over the OB, and as you can see, it's just gonna fade and crash left, which is exactly what I'm going for, nice and safe. So I took the Evader out right now because of field work. So I kind of rotate this in and out as I'm doing field work, especially in the off season. And I like to test things out. So this isn't my official bag, but for right now, what I'm gonna grab for a shot like this is what fits my eye is my Orbit Felon and Fusion Felon. So th these are both a little bit straighter runs of Felon, which for a shot like this, I want it to hold straight. I don't really want to rely on a, a left finish, which my Lucid Ice Felons would finish hard. So I'm definitely not gonna grab that. And it's like still a, a good disc, but just not for this type of shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with this Orbit Felon. But I'm gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna focus on trying to hit this disc through that gap with a little bit of Annie and just that towards the end of the flight, get that little bit of skip and, uh, and really rely on the, on the finish at the end. So now the finish at the end, money. So the Evader is a good disc for this shot, but it's actually gonna maybe glide too much. So that's the only reason I may not grab that over the Felon is because the distance of the hole if this basket was another 50 feet, I may grab this, but the distance control for the felon for this shot is a lot more appealing. But I'm still gonna throw it and I can just kind of tone down on the evader because it's got a lot more glide than the felon. And we'll go ahead and show you, throw it at about 80%. And as you can see, it's gliding a lot straighter and that's why I wouldn't normally grab it, but it's still fading back at the end a little bit. So it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, that's why I choose the felon over the evader. All right, so we got a par four. Looks like a roller. So I'm gonna go to the Vandal. Try, just try to throw it through the gap and hit the Vandal on the side slope and just kind of let the slope take it, take it, take it, and let the understability of the Vandal kind of turn it right at the end of the flight. Hit the hill, turn a little left, and then come back right at the end here in a minute. So you can't see it, but it rode the hill, rode the hill, and then the Vandal kind of got understable towards the end of the roller flight and then just 
turn right. So it should be in a great spot. So these are the other felons. <laughs> no, this is a, a good shot for the lucid ice felon just because I'm gonna throw it a little flex and it's just gonna have a nice dump. And I got a hill to, this, to the right side of the basket so that when I spike this lucid felon, it's just gonna hit the hill and kind of stop. So that's kind of what's going through my mind when I'm, as far as the reasoning behind throwing this lucid ice felon as opposed to an orbit or a raptor eye. So it's gonna turn, come back and be kind of just run into the hill like that, kind of just stop. So as you can see, I used that hill and the slope to my advantage by throwing the lucid ice felon into the hill. I'll try to show you guys. So this is going to be a raptor eye felon. And I'm going to show, I'm going to throw it on the same angle and I'm going to show you guys just how far it's going to go straight and it's not really going to fade back. And so you can see the difference why I chose the lucid ice over the raptor eye. So it's going straight, 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 not hyzering, not hyzering until the very end. And now it's too straight. So <laughs> big difference. We go up there, my lucid ice is gonna be probably 10, 15 feet. That one's like 50, 60 feet long. So for, especially for a shot like this, I gotta throw it so high that the felon isn't quite fast enough to get that distance forward before it starts fading. And the criminal covers that distance and gives you that little extra oomph, so to say, to get that power to get to the basket on a shot that you have to throw this high. It's kind of a mix between my rive distance. It's not quite as far as the rive, but not quite as short as the felon. So it fits the, the disc choice in between those two. And it's a little more glidey than the lucid ice to give me that lucid ice felon, I would say, and uh, gives me that extra glide. So I'm stepping up to this par three and I'm gonna grab three different mid ranges depending on the wind. The first one is the Supreme Fugitive. I like this on a nice flex line that's gonna hyzer out kind of at the end and it just can handle that torque. It's definitely torque resistant for a mid range. That's nice. And then the Trust, the Albert Signature Series Trust, this is a lot straighter than, than that Fugitive. So if I wanna throw it with a little more hyzer, pop up to flat and just glide, this Trust is what I'm gonna grab. And then say there's a tailwind, I'm gonna go with my gold line compass, this thing's broken in and it can really hyzer flip and really is perfect to hit that glide in that tailwind. So for the conditions right now, we actually have a little headwind. So that's gonna naturally keep the fugitive a little straighter than it normally would fly. So for that reason, I'm gonna go with the fugitive on this shot. So as you can see, the headwind kept it straight. It's gonna hyzer back towards the end now. So as you can see, the headwind kept that fugitive nice and straight versus if there was no wind, that fugitive's gonna wanna hyzer out and go 40, 50 feet left, and that wouldn't be what I'm looking for. Yeah, it's just outside of putting range. So I'll probably just do a nice, kind of get on a knee just to give myself a little more touch and try to throw it in just like that. Oh, <laughs> see how I can kind of give it a run and kind of still have that nice speed control to sit it by the basket if I miss. So the slammer is such a go-to disc for me because I feel like upshots are probably the most important part of the game if you're trying to score and play at a high level. And the slammer is just such a consistent disc for distance control, for angle control, all of that. And for me, when I'm throwing my slammers well, I'm playing well. And I think that that's the biggest reason why the slammer is my favorite disc. So I'm stepping up to a scramble shot and I'm gonna go ahead and grab a beat up harp. And the reason why I'm gonna grab the harp over the slammer is because when you have a shot like this, as you can see this gap, I'm gonna throw this harp and if, since it's beat up, it's really gonna hold the angle a lot longer than the slammer. The slammer is gonna wanna hyzer out towards the end of the flight and we still have a pretty long up shot that we need to hold straight and avoid the OB on the right hand side. There we go. Beat up harp. Now for this shot, the Emac Judge is gonna be my disc of choice because we got the side slope here on the right hand side and the Emac Judge is nice and glidey. So I like the glide of it and I've been really liking how fast they are. They're glidey and they feel faster. I feel like the profile for the Emac Judge compared to the regular Judge is that little bit faster speed uh, compared to just the regular Judge. So, and we got a little bit of distance to cover here. So I like the, the fact this is, this is gonna get there fast and get me the distance I need. So it's gonna glide, get there, use the hill, and trickle back. 
We forgot to ask him to talk about his putters, but Ricky is still putting with daggers in the sense plastic and he is still draining them from Raptor Rage. By the way, thanks for watching. Make sure to follow the Dynamic Disc social media channels because we'll be announcing a Ricky in the bag giveaway soon.